What's up, boys and girls? Sam Gas, back in the flesh. We're whipping around in a Daytona. So today, we're gonna be talking about comparing owning a V8 and a V6 charger. Specifically, in my case, this is from a 3.6 Pentastar V6 to a 6.4 392 Hemi V8, obviously. So there's good and bad to both, you know? I mean, I know a lot of people would say, you know, V8, V8, this and that, but there's good things about having a V6 over a V8. It's all dependent on your situation, you know? Yeah, there's many, many things to consider. a sick thing to consider. What's up guys? We're back with another video. Go get your merch. Link in the description as always. Well, you got a 392 and somebody doesn't want to let you in a lane you know you just do one of those and uh you're good let me just uh open my red bull and get ready for the video you know what i mean okay okay maybe that's good well either way guys i got my red bull open you know what i mean ah, get a little hyped up so basically, whoever's watching this video is basically wondering what it's like to own either a V6 or a V8 charger or a Challenger. It applies to both. In most cases, I would say that people are trying to upgrade from a V6 to a V8 if you're watching this video. So I had a 2018 Dodge Charger SXT Plus, which I have a video. I'll try to throw something up here that you guys can click on to go watch the review on that car. And now I have a 2017 Dodge Charger Daytona 392. If you don't even know what my Daytona looks like, maybe you clicked on this video and you don't follow my channel, um, go ahead. I'll, I'll try to put some somewhere, some somewhere. Maybe I'll put it in the description box to check and you can see my Daytona review as well. Um, the video is called Taking Delivery of My Daytona 392. And by the way, guys, if you're not subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe, please, because I'm trying to grow this thing. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep this consistent, dude. I'm trying to keep this consistent, dude. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get out videos consistently and uh hopefully it's stuff people like you know what i mean hopefully hopefully uh my top two favorite colors have always been plum crazy purple and gold mango so i mean there was a plum crazy one i was looking at but they were taxing they were taxing pretty hard so i went to the gold mango uh but yeah i love both cars obviously i i love this car a little more but i do love both cars i think that they're both sick cars they're both chargers at the end of the day they're very similar cars the v6 i did buy brand new this daytona i bought used i've had my v6 for a year and a half i had this thing for a little over a month now a lot of it is the same same thing like this is the same car dude like, this thing is fully loaded this thing is not missing a single option guys like whatever you guys can think of sunroof adaptive cruise uh heated cooled seats heated wheel uh heated rear passenger uh everything you know daytona package you know it's got everything even came with the red bull it came with the hat and the jacket too just like dj petro's car and yeah it came with the hat and the jacket too straight out yeah. the factory oh yeah well listen dude it depends on your life situation and what you want out of the car because the car is meant to serve you nobody else right if you want power sound if you drive aggressive if you drive if you like to drive fast if you uh like to pass people a lot like pass all the time and it's wasting a, a, a shit ton of gas dude then you gotta go with the hemis you gotta go with the hemis i mean whether it's a 5.7 a 6.4 or a hellcat you'll be uh you'll be good in a 6-4 you pass someone you hit the gas you whoop, and you're you're in big difference gas obviously obviously you're wasting a ton more gas i drive almost always city i drive almost no highway so this is all city mpg you're getting 15 mpgs 15 maybe 16 
I'm getting 15 now. I'm getting 15. That includes, you know, cylinder deactivation, the MDS system. That includes conservative driving. That includes following the speed limit within five miles an hour. In the V6, I was getting 20 in the city. In the city. That's real world numbers. That's not on the paper what some government tested or dodge tested. I'm pretty sure the government is the one who does it, but that's not their numbers. Those are my numbers, my personal numbers. You know what I mean? It's rear wheel drive, both of them. You know, obviously the power, I don't really want to talk about the too obvious stuff. I want to give you some real numbers though, like the gas, that's a real number. That's not like on Google what you find. But a Daytona 392 is a uh, very stiff suspension. The ride is a lot more bumpy, a lot more boop, 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 boop. You know what I mean? As far as I know, the RT and the SXT have the same suspension. So, I mean, they're, it's not like that. But this is my personal experience from Daytona 392 from a V6. It looks a lot more aggressive, though, because of that suspension. So, when you drop, like, this ride height is, like, lower than I thought, you know. It still looks super mean, super mean, super clean. 245s on a V6, because I had the black top package, I had the 245 20s. Those boys will spin when it's dry on 300 horsepower. How? I don't know, but they do spin. The V6 spins, but this comes on 275 20s. The, uh, the tire is only 30 millimeters wider. Yeah, 30. It still spins. 392. Daily drivability is definitely tougher, lower, stiffer. Uses more gas, obviously. But, I mean, if you're okay with all those things, then get it. The big thing, winter drivability. Winter drivability. So, we're comparing a V6 rear-wheel drive to a V8 rear-wheel drive. They're both rear-wheel drive, just more power. Like, people tweak about sliding, dude. Like, so what? If you can control it, what's the problem, dude? Just go slower. You'll be fine, dude. People complain like, oh, my God, it slides. Wow. I mean, there's like six inches of snow, dude. If you were in an all-wheel drive, you'd slide too. It doesn't matter, bro. With the V6, I did not put winter tires. I just rocked the factory all seasons, which were Goodyear Eagle F1 or something like that. Goodyear Eagle something. I don't know. They were fine. Like... One time we had a really bad snowstorm and it was like sliding, but like tires weren't that bad in winter. Like it was still fine. With this car, <coughs> this thing comes with Pirelli P0 Nero's out the factory, which are all seasons. Yeah, that's 275. It's got a bunch of torque, it's heavier in the front as the V8. I didn't want to play around, so I just went and found a really good deal on some used Blizzx. About four used Blizzx, which are basically new. The guy used them only once, one winter. That's what he said, and I was like, "Yeah, right." I went and looked at him, dude. Looked like he didn't even use them once, let alone one winter. That I bought those boys, three hundred fifty dollars for all four. They're two seventy five, forty twenty, just like the factory size. Not on a stock wheel. I didn't even get a different wheel. But if you drive normally, like it's fine. It's fine, dude. Where I live. Like, the streets get clean so fast, dude. Why are you getting an all-wheel drive? What a waste. What a waste. You're paying all these taxes for these dudes to go and clean the street for you. And then on top of that, you buy all-wheel drive. Because, because it snows. You want to be safe. Oh, man. You want to be safe? Get a two-wheel drive. Stop wasting your money on all-wheel drive. Put some winter tires on it. It's cheaper than an all-wheel drive system. You get a, I don't know, let's say Corolla. Corolla all-wheel drive versus the front-wheel drive Corolla. I don't know the price difference, but I'm assuming it's a lot more than $350, is what I'm trying to say, you know? So, it's fine in that aspect. If you prepare yourself with the Blizzx, it's fine. If I left the Pirellis, it wouldn't be as good, but you could still, you could still rock it, you know? But yeah, man, I mean, other than that, I mean, there's your obvious stuff, like the... You know, the power, the sound, the this and that. Do you feel a difference? Yeah, you feel a huge difference. Uh, don't don't at me if you think otherwise. I have drove all, all the trim levels of the, of, of the Chargers. SXT, uh, the RT, the Scat Pack, the Daytona with the 5.7, the Daytona 392 like I got, the Hellcat. V6 to 5.7, not really a big difference, honestly. Honestly, the sound is the big difference. The power, 
it's not really a huge difference. The torque is there. Don't get me wrong. The torque is there. The torque is there. So when you're off a line and you gun it, it feels a lot different than a V6. But once you're up to speed and you're trying to gain speed, yeah, it's the same as a V6. Like it's gaining speed, but it's like barely chugging along. You know what I mean? But this thing, nah, this thing got power all the time, 24 seven. You hit this thing off the line, boom, moves. Boom, it moves. It moves. Your big considerations for V6 or V8, whether you're looking to upgrade or whether you're looking to get in the market of a charger and you don't know to go V6 or V8, depends. Do you care about the gas mileage? If you do, do not even consider a Hemi whatsoever. Daily drivability, uh, rear wheel drive, snow type thing. Like, that's fine. Maybe that's fine. Maybe they're like me. Maybe they're crazy. Maybe they're like, I don't care, dude. Daytona, dude. I'm not about to let where I live determine what kind of car I'm going to drive. I'm going to drive what kind of car I want to drive, dude. Whatever I want. I can't drive Daytona because I live in Chicago and it snows, dude. Oh, man. I can't drive a Daytona, dude. I don't care if it snows. I don't care if it rains. I don't care if it's zero degrees. I don't care if it's 100 degrees. I'm driving what car I like, bro. Okay? Okay, bro? Yeah. Your fuel economy expectations. Cost of ownership expectations. Winter. Like I said, maybe you're like me. Crazy. All in all, it just depends on what you want to hear. Do you want to turn on your car and hear this? Or do you want to turn on your car and not hear anything really? Sometimes it's nice not hearing anything, but you know, sometimes you want to just... Sometimes you want to just... Sometimes you want to just do that, bro. Bad yeah, guys, that's about it for today. So basically, for my situation, I'd rather have the V8. Both cars are cool to me. Doesn't matter, V8, V6. Still sick cars. I love charges in general. I'm Sam Gas. I'm hauling ass. Check out my other videos. Subscribe. Buy your merch. You know what I mean? Yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye. Have fun. And uh, yeah, see you guys next time.